Conflict within Palestine and Israel has reached international headlines recently. The Global Network wants to shed light on some of the missile defense issues pertaining to this conflict. With this in mind, we cannot ignore Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. Here are some facts about the system and how it is currently being used, as well as its effect on the current conflict between Palestine and Israel. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. The Iron Dome is described as an Israeli mobile all-weather air defense system. It was developed by Raphael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries, which are both an Israeli weapons manufacturing companies. The Iron Dome is described to intercept and destroy short-range missiles and artillery shells fired from 4 to 70 kilometers away. The air missile system was declared operational and initially deployed in March of 2011 and has been maintained, researched, and used ever since. From 2011 to 2021, it was not Israel who funded the research project, but the United States political regime, or Congress, who provided $1.6 billion to develop the missile system. Last year in 2022, the U.S. Congress approved another $1 billion to fund the project. According to the Congressional Research Service, the U.S. government has spent nearly $3 billion on the program alone. Today, Israel has 10 Iron Dome batteries across the country. Each battery contains 60 to 80 interceptor missiles. Each interceptor missile costs about $60,000. At the end of October 2023, the U.S. agreed to send two more Iron Dome batteries. The air defense missile system has been said to have over a 90% success rate. Yet, it was not able to defend Israeli citizens against the rocket attacks from Hamas. Why not? An aerospace engineer, Ian Boyd, recently provided an explanation of why the Iron Dome batteries failed to intercept the rockets. Quote, It is a simple question of numbers. Hamas fired several thousand missiles, and Israel had less than a thousand interceptors in the field ready to counter them. Even if the Iron Dome was 100% effective against the incoming threats, the very large number of Hamas missiles meant some were going to get through. The Hamas attacks illustrate very clearly that even the best air defense systems can be overwhelmed if they are overmatched by the number of threats they have to encounter. The Israeli missile system has been built up over many years with high levels of financial investment. How could Hamas afford to overwhelm it? Again, it all comes down to numbers. The missiles fired by Hamas cost about $600 each, and so they are about 100 times less expensive than the Iron Dome interceptors. The total cost to Israel of firing all of its interceptors is around $48 million. If Hamas fired 5,000 missiles, the cost would be only $3 million. End quote. In simple terms, the main point is this. A low-cost, less capable approach was able to defeat a more expensive, high-technological system. And according to the Congressional Research Service report on the military funding and U.S. aid to Israel, it is the largest recipient of foreign military financing, or FMF. And the annual FMF grants to the country take up 16% of the overall Israeli defense budget. In addition, the country has one of the highest defense expenditures as a percentage of GDP in the world at 5.17%. Now, the U.S. and Israel sign a 10-year MOU, or Memorandum of Understanding, every decade or so. The current 10-year plan covers the fiscal years of 2018 to 2028. Within this 10-year period, the U.S. has pledged to provide $33 billion in FMF grants to Israel, plus an additional $5 billion strictly for its missile defense programs. The U.S. funding to Israel's military highlights a deeper problem, the relationship between the U.S. political and military leadership to Israel's political and military leadership. 
And what is the basis of this relationship? Why is the U.S. sending unconditional support to the country, which is founded on the displacement, exploitation, and oppression of the Palestinian people, and in general, to Arab people throughout the region? To answer this question, I think Noam Chomsky provides one of the best and concise explanations of this relationship. There are also significant geostrategic factors. And you go back to 1948, uh, there was actually a split between the State Department and the Pentagon in the United States over how to react to the new state of Israel. And the State Department was, 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 question, was not committed strongly to Israeli conquests, the establishment of the state. I was concerned about the refugees. It wanted an implementation of the refugee problem. The Pentagon, on the other hand, was very impressed with Israel's military potential. The Israeli military successes, uh, if you look back at the internal record and in declassified, uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff described uh, Israel as the second largest military force in the region after Turkey and a potential base for U.S. power in the region. Now that continued, can't run through the whole record, but in 1958, when there was a serious crisis in the region, uh, uh, Israel was the only state that strongly cooperated with Britain and the United States, and it won plenty of support from the governments and the military for that reason. Uh, 1967 is when the current relations with Israel were pretty much established. Israel performed a major service to the United States by destroying a secular Arab nationalism, a major enemy of the United States, and supporting radical Islam, which the U.S. supported. And it continues right until the present. The relationship between the U.S. and Israel is one of the strongest relationships in the world between two oppressive powers specifically two ruling classes who are united in the continual oppression of the poor and working class people around them. From the beginning, when Israel was officially created in 1948, President Truman was one of the first leaders to recognize the state, partly because Truman's former business partner, Edward Johnson, played a pivotal role in laying the groundwork for this recognition, but obviously there were strategic advantages driving this decision by the U.S. ruling class. I also antagonized a lot of people by recognizing the state of Israel as soon as it was formed. Part of it includes the beginning of the Cold War, where the U.S. was facing off against the Soviet Union, with the Middle East in such high reserves of oil, as well as strategic waterways and shipping lanes, influence in the region became an important part of the strategy of the U.S. ruling class. Meanwhile, the U.S. became the dominant superpower in the world, taking over weakening European powers, such as the United Kingdom. But even at this point, the support for Israel was not yet unconditional. It wasn't until the War of 1967 in which Israel defeated the poorly led armies of Egypt, Syria, and Jordan and occupied the rest of historical Palestine, as well as some territory from Syria and Egypt. Since this time, the U.S. has supported Israel unconditionally and unequivocally. A major part of this is to defend the ruling class interests of Israel against any hostile acts from nearby Arab regions. Today, Israel is the largest recipient of U.S. aid in the post-World War II world. In 2016, President Obama signed a defense agreement to provide the country with $38 billion in U.S. military support, including funding for the Iron Dome. But what does the rest of the world say to this relationship towards Israel's occupation of the Palestinian people? In England on October 29th, 70,000 people protested against the actions of Israel. In Turkey, hundreds of thousands demonstrated their support for Palestine. In San Francisco, over 15,000 people attended an event to show their disgust against Israel. Thousands more showed up in Los Angeles and New York. And in Iraq, pro-Palestinian groups staged a sit-in to block Iraqi oil exports to Jordan. The world's majority of people have shown huge support for Palestine. 
It is only the minority of the powerful elites who show support for Israel. As the question goes, which side are you on?